that's a little unusual because usually you saw the old men sitting at the bar where they could look at the person they were talking to through the mirror and not have to turn their heads. <laughs> but, uh, five yeah. old men sitting around the table and I asked three of what was going on. This was in November. He said, this is Armistice Day. And uh, those guys are all veterans of World War I. There were five of them. And uh, he said, you know, what's really strange is all five of those guys fought for a different army, fought with a different army. And around the table there was uh, John Tanyan, who some of you may remember, John Tanyan, who uh, was from Yugoslavia, what became Yugoslavia after the war, actually, but he fought for one of the armies there. There was Ralph Falsetto, Raphael Falsetto, in the old country, he was Italian, and he had uh, fought with the Italian army. There was Frank Hodson, who was uh, an Englishman, and he fought for the British army. And then there was uh, Anton Danny, who actually had already immigrated to the United States, but he went back for that war with the American Expeditionary Force. There's four armies that, uh, around that table, and the fifth guy was Emil Lauf, who was a German, and he fought for the Kaiser. So we not only had five armies represented at that table, but we had uh, both sides. Uh, and these were guys that uh, 50 years before, this was 1968, the year before Flossing started, 1968, 50 years before had been Armistice Day, the day that the uh, Armistice was signed and they could all stop shooting at each other. Uh, it was a, a, a really interesting event, but all of those guys uh, emigrated to the United States within a few years after the war, looking as immigrants usually are for a better life. And uh, they, Emil Lark put it most vividly, he said, they told us that uh, in America, milk and honey flow in the streets, <laughs> which is a kind of a strange image. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, they all came looking for a better life, and uh, they found hard times here. It was a hard place to start. Uh, the, we've heard about the great American melting pot, really kind of a pressure cooker. <laughs> it filled from the bottom. And you uh, came and you, uh, you know, to have the gumption to cross the ocean with very little money, very little anything, uh, and in hopes of finding a better life, things were not that good in Europe. And then you know, a situation where you've got five armies all engaged in a war, four against one, uh, but they uh, varied from time to time who was going to be the one that uh, the other four were against. Uh, but it was uh, a, a, a hard life for them, uh, and they, uh, they came, and they, uh, you know, because people tend to like to hang out with people that speak the same language. They, they were neighborhoods that grew up in Crested Butte. <coughs> the Italians were over on uh, the southeast side of town, White Rock and uh, Sopras Avenues. The, uh, all of the uh, Central Europeans, the uh, Slovenes, the uh, Croatians, the Slovakians, the Czechs, and uh, Pol the Polish, and uh, uh, the Germans were pretty much on the west side of town. The English, who had gotten here first, uh, were on the northeast side of town, over in the vicinity of the, the uh, little uh, church that's there, still there now. But they, uh, they had uh, kids, the kids went to work, they had big families, 
The sons all went to work in the mines as soon as they could, which was anywhere from the age of 12 up. And uh, they put all the money together to buy them, to try to get enough money accumulated to buy their way out of the mine by buying a business in town or buying some ranch land down valley was a favorite too. And we still got uh, Rosmans and Carreras and a number of other families that uh, started out in the mines and worked their way into ranching. It's kind of what you would call a heritage culture. Uh, it isn't really an economy, ranching in this valley. It's a culture. And uh, it kind of is passed along. We've got four and five generations in some of those families. But uh, they all started out in the same place, started out in Prestidude in the mine, and uh, moved on out. Uh, kids, kids that weren't uh, old enough to go to work in the mines had gangs, uh, just like Europe, you know, just like Europe. They had gangs that ran around and harassed each other and uh, 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 physical fighting and uh, that kind of thing. But uh, through time, the edges kind of wore off from those separations and uh, it kind of came down to five old men at the table drinking beer, eating gals to Rica's world famous spaghetti, and uh, telling stories. After they finished eating, Emil Lunk, the German, got out his bandonia, which is a kind of a uh, accordion-like instrument, and gave the group some music, which he said he had done back in Germany in 1917 and 18, put the troops on the other side. And I, I, it's a, um, I found that to be a kind of a, a moving experience in a way that these guys who had all been uh, shooting each other in a sense uh, uh, 50 years before were now in Crested Butte in America and it's the kind of a story that uh, uh, I think we need to remember as we're hearing what we're hearing these days. Uh, that uh, was also in our minds, that kind of thing was in our minds when we were uh, sitting around in January in the various bars around town, uh, thinking, God, this place is dead. <laughs> well, you know what it's like in January. <laughs> uh, and uh, we uh, thought, you know, this is not an economy because you can't get rich in it. <laughs> this isn't an economy. It's uh, th th this is uh, we aren't here for the economic opportunity. We're here because we want to be here, and what we're doing is we are we're a culture, just like those uh, guys that uh, were sitting in the bar that day. They they brought their culture with them to the extent that they could. They uh, never made much money working as miners or as ranchers, but they had a culture. And the essence of the culture, I think, was how to have a rich life without needing a bunch of money. And that's, uh, you know, that, that's a, probably a good uh, lesson for us all to think about for the 21st century. But at any rate, we uh, put that together with uh, the fact that we were basically not creating an economy here, we were creating a culture. People coming to the mountains because it wasn't like where they grew up, coming to the mountains and uh, uh, starting a, a new life, a new culture, a new uh, and it, it has evolved as a culture. It's a culture that spends a lot of time outdoors. It's a culture of uh, people that uh, enjoy getting it on every so often. Uh, <laughs> dinner uh, It's, it's uh, all in the interest of having a rich life without needing a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> 